I remember lining up my small fingers against each bruise and thinking, this is how big my dad's hands are. I was 10 years old and happily playing in our living room. My father was reading one of his thick theology books, as he often did, and he told me to be quiet. I hushed and went back to playing with my dolls. Suddenly he gripped my arm, jerked me around, shook me, and began to beat me. I screamed and screamed, but he wouldn't stop hitting. Finally, my mom ran in and he dropped me, and I ran into my room and huddled on the floor. Most of my childhood was marked by abuse like this and many other kinds at the hands of my church-going father. The people who knew did nothing. The people I tried to tell, including at church, either didn't listen or didn't understand. I began to lock my bedroom door at night and tie bells around the doorknob, but that didn't stop the nightmares, the feelings of hopelessness, and the thoughts of suicide. I often felt terrified, confused, and totally alone. But I knew I was not forsaken. This is the story of the journey I traveled through the valley of the shadow of death, the things that guided me, the milestones which helped me process the trauma and recover, it's still raw, but ultimately this is a story about hope, about healing, and about a future beyond our pain. The Bible calls Jesus our mighty God. He's a wonderful counselor, our great physician. Let me tell you how he healed me. I wrote this book for people like me and for people who want to help, understand, and minister well to people like me. If you have suffered abuse, we are members of a tragically large club that no one wants to join. We share a pain that's strikingly consistent. We've drunk the same poison from different cups. And I want to show you that no level of abuse is too minor to matter, and no survivor is too broken to feel God's healing grace. That I and that you are not forsaken.